many people who did Margaret Thatcher, I think they 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 knowingly did her too patronizingly. They sort of, they did it rather like that, as if she were always, but goodness me, she was a conviction politician. She wasn't going to hide behind her views. And, um, and I based that on my grandmother because my grandmother spoke nothing like her. But she was a tough Yorkshire woman yeah. who just said what she believed in. And the way, the way I always treated Margaret Thatcher, uh, the voice, was, was, was never to... Well, you couldn't do anything else with it, really, could you? I mean, it was... Yes, it was shrill. <laughs> yes, it was very high and very penetrating, like <laughs> electricity going through your body. But goodness me, you always knew what was going on behind it, and that was the important point. Did, did we ever find out what she, what she thought of Spitting Image? Because we know, if you think about satire like Yes, Prime Minister, uh, Yes, Minister, actually a lot of uh, inhabitants of Number 10 quite liked it. They felt it was a fairly accurate portrayal of what was going on inside the civil service in Number 10. D do we know what she thought of Spitting Image? Did she, did she find it cruel? Uh, I don't think she watched it, and I don't think she'd have got the joke. She didn't understand people who disagreed with her, did she? That was that's the truth. Uh, with Yes Prime Minister, she thought that was very, very funny because it showed a weak Prime Minister being, being controlled by the civil service, which she wasn't. So the only reason she found Yes Prime Minister funny wasn't because it was making fun of, of a Prime Minister such as herself. It was making fun of a Prime Minister the opposite of herself, and, and that was the sort of joke that Mrs Thatcher got. I mean, she did have a sense of humour, I think. Somebody, uh, I remember in Parliament once, uh, Kinnock was away and Roy Hattersley was standing in it. I think it was the last week of the, uh, before they all went on holiday or whatever. And he asked her a question about the economy and, and she stood up and she said, uh, inflation is falling, unemployment is falling. And then she looked at him and said, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> is there, um... Is there anybody in modern British politics which uh, has the, the, the potential to be sent up in quite the same way? Uh, the answer to that is no, <laughs> if you want the good one. I mean, again, I mean, I don't mean to ridicule her, and it's not just doing women, but I do think there is a bit of Anne Whittacom that is rather Thatcherite, and uh, she has the gift of a voice. Uh, I, told, I met her recently, and she, and she said uh, she thought I was very good at doing her, and she got rather sort of sheepish when I... T she said, well, how do you do my voice? <laughs> and I said, well, it's, it's sort of two notes. She said, you're right about that. And I said, um, Homer Simpson has the same voice. Because Homer Simpson has the same <laughs> voice. That, that. So she was rather got really upset that Homer Simpson has the same, same voice as, uh, as uh, Anne Whittacombe. I just, I just wonder, Steve, on a, on a slightly more serious note, whether do you have any misgivings about the fact that a lot of arguably young people in particular now draw their lessons from recent history uh, not necessarily from newspapers or news programs like ours but from more mainstream comedy I mean you think about America in particular uh, the Letterman program things like that often inform the political outlook and worldview of young people in a way that the news programs don't and, and I just wonder sometimes whether you think that the, the satire which you, the tradition that you were part of uh, has almost grown too influential I think that that's a fair point because we, we began to realise how influential Spitting Image was when instead of having a picture of the Chancellor Nigel Lawson or the Foreign Secretary uh, D um, Douglas Hurd uh, on a serious article ab about foreign policy, they would actually reproduce this, the Spitting Image um, uh, sort of image rather than the, the real picture. So it, it's not so much reality and, and, uh, and fiction getting blurred. I mean, one thing that I think that, to, to its credit, though, Spitting Image did do was introduce the Cabinet to the British population. I mean, pre-Spitting pre Image, I doubt if anybody would have known half the names of the Cabinet. Um, but those, you know, when you think about that cabinet, there was uh, there was Liam Britton, there was Norman Tebbit, there was Cecil Parkinson, names that will be very familiar to anybody sort of over the age of thirty-five, through spitting image rather than through th through anything else. Yeah, uh, great point, Saul, and we really imp enjoyed your impression very much. The uh, pleasure Steve. was all <laughs> yours, <laughs> Steve. Thank you very much indeed, Steve Nallen. Yeah, Steve, thank you very much for being with us. Um, you played. Oh, well, you say you, you imitated the former Prime Minister's voice very, very well in Spitting Image, and as we just saw there, what was it about her, um, her personality, that you were, I guess, attracted to? Well, you know, with, with most politicians, they, they try to hide what they're really thinking. 
you know, that they've got an, an agenda where they, they try to hide it. But, but with Mrs. Thatcher, she never needed to do that, you know. Uh, of course, people have been talking about Mrs. Thatcher being divisive. But one thing you cannot ever say about the lady was that you didn't know what was going on in the voice and what she was thinking. And th those are great characters to play. And interestingly enough, uh, Mrs. Thatcher had different voices, didn't she, for, I guess, uh, to show different types of emotion. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, you know, in the interview technique, she often used to be very slow in some ways, very, very considered, often looking to the side and then answering the question. And then, of course, she would be uh, at the big speech in, in um, a party conference, far more statesmanlike. We have achieved, we will continue to achieve, and we shall achieve. But my favourite voice was actually the one that American presidents were always shocked at when they come to the House of Commons and they see the, the British Prime Minister having to face, uh, you know, 600... Uh, baying voices and, and for that she she created a very shrill very high pitch voice which which went through the whole chamber the right honorable gentleman doesn't understand the nature of foreign policy goodness me she could be heard what do you think did you actually I should say did you ever get a chance to to meet her and did she ever tell you what she thought of of your voice or impression of her no, sadly not. I would have loved to have met her. I came with about a couple of feet of her once uh, at, a, at a, a private function. Um, she, had a, she had an electricity about her. You know, she was quite a small lady. You see her on television, you, you, you sort of television often cheats the image. She was actually more petite than, than you'd imagine her to be. But even the brief 30, 40 seconds w where I was near her, you had a real a real sense of the electricity that was, was in there and, and, the, and, and the power vessel that she was. Was it interesting, I mean, uh, did I hear that she had taken elo uh, elocution uh, uh, lessons as well? Because she, uh, uh, she was born in Grantham in, in, a, in a small town in England, uh, and, but she sounded very posh. She taught herself more than elocution. Where the elocution came in was, was because on because on television she had a very high voice she was taught to bring that lower to lower that voice so technically she had a lower voice than most women would have because she taught herself to do that and of course on television that sounds it simply sounds better having having a high voice doesn't do very good um, but occasionally she would uh, in ra on rare occasions, she would use uh, Lincolnshire expressions. She came from Grantham, um, uh, and she'd use sort of local expressions that n nobody else would use. She famously told the leader of the opposition uh, in Parliament that he, he, she didn't say he was, you're frightened of an election. She said, you're frit, you're frit, which is a, 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 a local word that nobody would ever heard of before, that only people in Grantham would have understood, which meant that you're frightened. Well, Mr. Nowen, you certainly uh, 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 imitated her very well. The voice you caught was Thank just... Uh, I remember growing up watching you and watching Spinning Image. So, <laughs> indeed, you certainly left an impression on us as well.